Welcome back. Uh, please welcome Mayuka, software engineer at Ripple. Ripple, okay. Hi, um, let me just share my screen, get this going. Hi, my name is Mayuka. I'm a software engineer at Ripple, and I'm here to talk about XRPL Pi, which is the Python library for interacting with the XRP ledger. Now, just to go to the basics, what is the XRP ledger? Well, it's one of the first decentralized blockchains. It uh, was established in 2012. It has really high performance. Uh, it's been in tests, it's been shown to have up to and even greater than 1500 transactions per second. It has really low latency, ledgers close every four seconds. It's got low fees, less than you know a fraction of a penny per transaction that you have to pay. It's carbon neutral. It has a native DEX decentralized exchange and you don't need any smart contracts for that. And likewise, uh, native NFTs, which you also don't need any smart contracts for. So what is XRPL Pi? It's the main supported Python library for interacting with the XRP ledger. And the library was released in March of 2021. So some of the features, the library closely mirrors Ripple D in its interfaces. Ripple D is the software that actually runs the blockchain itself, somewhat similar to Geth. And so you can use all of the standard documentation for the various uh, requests and commands as well as library specific documentation when working with the library. And uh, there are class models for each of these request methods and for each transaction types. And these models natively check the form of the object to make sure that it's valid. There are two types of network clients, one that supports HTTP JSON RPC connections and one that supports WebSocket connections. And there's a wallet class to make it easier to store and interact with your key pairs. And the library has native signing and serialization capabilities for submitting transactions and the like. And there are a number of convenient helper abstraction methods, such as getting the current transaction fee, uh, getting an account's XRP balance, and signing and submitting a transaction. The library supports async IO, the Python method for running, working with async functions. So I've told you a lot about what XRPL Pi can do. So now let's see it in action. And I'm gonna walk through how to connect to the ledger, how to send requests for, to get information from the ledger, how to create and send transactions and how to determine if transactions were actually successful. But before I get into that, are there any questions? Uh, there are no questions in the chat right now, but uh, I will keep you posted for you, Mayuka. All right, then let's get into the demo. So this is just a Jupyter notebook. So we can first install the package using pip. I already have it installed. And now we can connect to the testnet server. So let's get a client for, we can work with the JSON RPC client. All right, Jupyter Notebook for some reason doesn't handle non-async stuff very well. So we're gonna stick with the async. So we can instantiate this client. And we can connect it to the testnet, which is at this URL. And then we can connect and figure out what the status of this um, of, of this network is using server info. And this is what the response looks like. Let's make that a little easier to read. So you can see what the build version of the node you're connecting to is, what the ledgers it has, 
how long it's been connected, what its, what its current time is, and some fee information. And so we know that we're properly connected to the ledger now. And so now we can actually work with the ledger. So first off, in order to do anything with the ledger, we need some, uh, we need a connection to, and a, we need a wallet. So let's create a wallet. There is a, there's a wallet faucet generation method that we have here so to just generate a faucet with, uh, to generate a wallet from the from the testnet faucet, so we can just do that. I need no wait there. Oh, this is just not happy with me today. Well, I'm just gonna install this deprecated package that it keeps yelling at me about, and hopefully that'll fix it. Now let's try this. There we go. This takes a bit. And now we have our wallet. So this is the address of the wallet. Our, all wallets in the XRP ledger ecosystem start with an R and are 40 characters long. Here we have the public key, the private key is hidden. Um, yeah, and so let's send a payment on the XRP ledger. So from XRP models, we'll get import a payment transaction. And so let's create this payment. So first we need the account that we're sending from. We need uh, the amount. Let's, the amount needs to be in drops, which are, there are 1 million drops in one XRP. So we can just use this ha handy dandy helper method. And since this is in 2022, let's do 22 XRP. And the destination equals, uh, let's just create an empty wallet. for now, and then we can do, let's make that wallet two. And so this is now what our payment looks like. It's got an account, the it's transaction type payment. A lot of this information isn't filled in yet. The amount is 22 million. And the destination is this other account that we just created. So first let's check the uh, account balance of this account that we have created and the account that we haven't created yet, just to make sure that we're actually going to be transferring some funds. So so we can print out the balance of the address and the balance of the other one. Need no wait. And so this first one has this amount of drops and the second one, the account doesn't exist, which is what we expected because we just created this wallet.create method, just creates a set of keys. It doesn't actually do anything with them. The account doesn't exist. So now that we have these two created, now, or now that we've looked at the accounts balance, we can now actually submit this transaction. So first we need to sign and autofill the transaction. 
there's a lot of information that's a part of this transaction that is necessary but isn't filled in yet, like the fee and the sequence number and uh, the actual, and then we actually have to sign the transaction. So we can do that all in one method with safe sign and autofill transaction. So, we have the payment transaction, we want it signed by the wallet, and we got to get information by the client. And I need to use the async version. And so if we print that out, now it's got a fee written down, it's got a sequence number, it's got a, the public key in here and the transaction signature. So it can actually be submitted now. And so now we can submit the transaction via this method called send reliable submission, which is set essentially sends the transaction and then checks that the transaction has indeed been validated and only returns once the transaction has either been validated or has been errored. So we can do with that, send reliable submission, signed payments, and then we submit it with the client. And this will take a few seconds. But it was, oh, I waited too long. So the um, autofill transaction method, it puts in a last ledger sequence number, which means that there, it, which is the last ledger in which this transaction is valid, because otherwise your transaction could just never be valid and that might screw you up later on. Uh, unknowingly. So if we just do this real quick, re autofill it, resubmit it, then now it's confirmed. So you can see at the bottom here that the transaction was indeed validated and it was indeed successful. And now if we find the uh, transaction hash, which is in here somewhere, um, Here's the transaction hash. And we plop that into this uh, testnet explorer at testnet.xrpl.org. We can then see that yes, 22 XRP was sent from this address to this address. And you can see the raw data here. So yeah, and back to the slideshow here. So what's on the horizon for the future? Of course, there's always more to improve on. So some of the additional features that we're looking to do are further unifying the three client libraries we have in Python, JavaScript, and Java. And so that they align and it's easier to put down one and pick up one, pick up another as needed. And also simplifying the multi-sign experience. Uh, the XRP ledger has native multi-sign. And so um, it's a little, uh, so how do we make it easier for people to use that feature? So check out the library on GitHub or PIP. We highly encourage you to use it in all of your Python projects for the XRP ledger. And if you wanna give us feedback, you can do that via the GitHub issues or talking to us in the Discord channel here, or I'll drop a link to the XRPL developer Discord in the Discord channel as well. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you so much, Mayuka. Um, I think there might be a question coming in um, about the unification of API interfaces. Great idea. So I guess that was just a comment. <laughs> uh, but if you want to expand more on that, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. So right now, the XRPL Pi and XRPL JS, uh, which are the Python and JavaScript libraries, are pretty are very similar, not exactly the same, but you know there's idiot idiosyncrasies for every library. Java is a, the Java API is a little different just because Java as a language is really different, and the way people use Java is really different than Python and JavaScript. So yeah, awesome. Uh, Miko asked, "Do I need to run my own nodes if I want to scrap a XRP ledger in scale?" 
Um, so if you want to do anything uh, in a production level, then you probably want to run your own node because uh, public infrastructure tends to have um, like rate limiting and all of that. And you probably don't want to trust it uh, necessarily, but there are a lot of public nodes that are pretty reliable for if you're just playing around or experimenting or testing something out. And that's available, all the information is available at xrpl.org. So you can go there and there's a lot of documentation on, uh, on how, how the XRPL works, how to use it, how to work with it. There are all kinds of tutorials. I think there's one that's very similar to the one that I did in the demo here. So that should be a great place to look for all that information. Cool. Um, well, if anyone has any more questions, you can hang out with us in the face-to-face. -face. And thanks again, uh, Mayuka, for the amazing presentation on Ripple. Thank you.